It's time for season two and our first full season as Darlington manager. So let's get in to some transfers. What is up guys, Matthew here. Welcome back to another episode of our FM24 Road to Glory career mode with Darlington. A big thank you for everyone who has checked out and put time in to view season one, of course, which is now in the can, in the book, signed and sealed. And we're here today ready to get season two underway. And this, of course, is a huge jumping on point for anyone who is new. So, yeah, if you do want to go back and check out any of the episodes thus far, there is a playlist on the channel. But um, this is our first transfer window as Darlington boss. We, of course, joined the Quakers mid-season, kept them up when they were 10 points adrift, and we're now looking to basically revamp the squad and go again next season in the hope of maybe fighting for the playoffs. So we did let a number of players go. We are actually starting at the beginning of July. We've had all of June pretty much where we huffed and puffed with signings but nothing of you know nothing really uh, substantial as yet. But um, if we have a little look at the players who we let go, can we see the players who were released? Can we see who was released? Released players? It's not letting me see the released players from last season. Oh, there they are. They're in this one. Okay, so we let quite a few players go. Maybe not as many as I was thinking um, because it would have left us pretty much bare bones. And it's safe to say the budget we've been given by the board is not the best when the books have been balanced. So the players who we have let go, Jordan Musto, he has left, of course. He was a pretty good wing back for us last season but um, he's 33 now and will only be decreasing in ability and we want someone a little bit more defensively minded in that position as well. Callum Griffiths left, he never played for us last season, he was on loan I believe at another club. Jacob Hazel, a problem signing of course we had or a problem player who was the vice captain. We had quite a few you know head to head sort of coming together with him and um, yeah he just simply is full choice striker, didn't like it. And we've finally been able to get him off the books. The former club captain, Tom Platt. I was actually thinking of keeping him, but the club recommended that he's not really good enough at this point. 30 years old. And, um, yeah, we can do better in that position. So we have let him go. Cameron Solkeld, he did well for us at times last season. But, again, we were advised to let him go. And we did We did need to, to revamp the squad. And he only really could play on either side. And the way we want to play is with really, really attacking wingers. Down the wings, overlapping fullbacks. He just doesn't fit into that. He would simply be coming in off the bench um, from time to time. And, and I don't think he would have... Like that. Ben Headley was someone we um and on quite a bit, but um, he was three star inverted fullback. We're wanting to play essentially this season, like I say, overlapping fullbacks. We want someone who's a little bit more attacking minded, someone who's a really good crosser of the ball. And yeah, as good as he was, I was going to keep him as a fringe player, but again, just to release a little bit more in terms of wages, we did let Ben Headley go. Johnny and Gandu. Disappointing. He was a bit of a star and um, an upcoming player, but never ever really impressed last season. We're starting to get a little bit upset as well. And with the formation we're looking to play, number 10s are not something we're looking for. So, again, an opportunity to get some money off the wage bill. And Jake Lawler, one of our centre backs from last season, again, he's 33 years old, coming towards the end of his prime, if not past it. And someone else that we are able to, yeah, gain some transfer. Uh, some wage budget back on. So the players that we did sign on were the following. So we'll go from top to bottom. So we did re-sign Ben Little, one of the stars of last season, an incredible midfielder and someone we probably would like to build the team around. He's now up to £775 a week. Harry Green, of course, we had on a short-term deal. He signed on for another year. Very good winger on the left. He's on £675 a week. Andrew Nelson, top goal scorer from last season, he stayed on. I think him and Thompson hopefully can create quite the partnership this season. He's on £650 a week. This guy, Tom Elliott, he's transfer listed. Um, we brought him in last season. He's been absolutely a, a huge flop, if I'm honest with you. And also started kicking off that he's not being played enough. So I thought, you know what? 
£600 a week, £12,000 transfer value. If we can get some money for him, it'll give us maybe the amount of money to, to get two more players in his position. Mitchell Curry, of course, we've signed him on as well. He came in and saved us literally last season and, um, yeah, definitely deserves a new contract. We have kept Max Thompson. We were going to sell him, but... I still have faith he can come good with his strong end of the season, so we've kept him on as well. Will Hatfield still here, of course. He had another year on his, his deal anyway, and he's a very good midfielder. Um, Tommy Taylor, we've got on a month-to-month -month basis at the moment. I didn't sign him on as such, but um, I do want to improve in that goalkeeping position, so that's one that's up in the air. Jarrett Rivers signed on as well. He's the under-18s manager, in fairness, but did a very good job on the wings last season. Toby Lee signed on as well. I thought I have to keep some of our defenders, so we have kept him in there, as well as Jasim Sukar. But we are definitely wanting to get ourselves another centre-back. And then we've got the three youngsters who, of course, come through our youth intake last season. So, yeah, it's, it's a light squad now. You know, looking at this, Connor Douglas has went back to Leeds as well. So, yeah, we're wanting to improve goalkeeper, we're wanting fullbacks, and I'd say an improved central defensive uh, or cent central defender. In the midfield, I like what we've got here with Harvey, Little, Hatfield in there as well, but maybe one more body I think would do us good. And then up in the attacking areas, I don't think we're that bad. I think Thompson, Nelson, and Curry are three strikers who should get us enough goals. Green, that's his position on the left, and to be fair, Jarrett Rivers will probably do a job on the right, but we do need depth there, despite the incredible talent that we've got through our youth intake. So, I dare say four or five signings, maybe six signings, I think will give us the depth we need. But um, the issue we've got is the transfer budget that we gained back, I guess kind of balanced out with the money we then put into to extending some of the contracts. So the wage budget that we were given of 8,844... We're already spending a lot of that already, so yeah, it's um, it's going to be tough to, to stay within the wage budget and have a squad that is just as competitive and can take a step forward. So we might need some help from the board, we might be working on a really stew-string budget, but um, we're going to go through July now, see who we can bring in, and um, yeah, fingers crossed we can build a good squad with what we've got. And uh, yeah, it can take us places this season, but it's certainly not going to be an easy window. Well, we might have our first signing, and it's one I did not expect to make. Tom Leake, a central defender. We were, well, we it was put to us that he would be a priority signing. He's someone we approached before his contract expired with Boston United, and he did not want anything to do with us. He scored against us last season as well. Three and a half star central defender, free agent now. And sounds like he has had so much interest from clubs well above us in the pyramid. However, he has turned them down. He's rejected an offer from Scunthorpe United. We want a standout defender, 23 years old. I think that's a tremendous signing through the door. Already our committed spending is over the wage budget and that's the first player we have signed. So we might have to just try and try and ride our luck with the, with, the, with the wage budget so far this season, but we are still hoping to get uh, Elliot, Tom Elliot out of the door. He's been offered via a transfer room. We desperately could do with the money for that to help us invest elsewhere. And um, also, if we do get a goalkeeper in, we'll be able to let Tom Taylor go as well because we have just promoted this guy up to the first team. He's not good enough to play yet, but he would be a good backup goalkeeper. So, um, yeah, already wage budget, it's a struggle, but we've got a very, very, very good centre-back through the door. So it's confirmed, as you can see there, Tom Leake, three and a half star potential, four and a half star. He could be a very good Van Vanarama national player, and uh, the board are very pleased to sign a calibre of player, and is good replacement for Jake Lawler, who we let go. So we're going to get him into the squad, and we're going to keep trying to wheel and deal with the very little room we have. So second signing through the door, Harry Perrett has come in. He was released and uh, was playing during a trials day, so we thought we'd go and scout him. And um, yeah, he's happy to join us. I think he was at Alfreton previously, and we are in need of fullbacks on both sides. So he is a wingback. He is a little bit more on the defensive side, but looks good in support as well. Crossing can be improved, but I like his pace down the right-hand side, his acceleration as well. He's got a decent work rate. And I think overall can be a good fullback 
and I believe he's also got some pretty good potential as well and he's signed as a fringe player which means he's not going to be pushing to start although if we're honest he will be starting pretty much most games for us up there so we have got a right back through the door another centre back who's agreed to join us is Jack Leckie and I'm a bit on the fence with this one because we put bids in for two centre backs and honestly I didn't expect to get either of them Tom Leake as we've said is one of the best in the division but we could then go and get this guy in as well and Jack Leckie is a 20 year old who again looks incredible so I'm sort of thinking if we do get Jack Leckie in is it worth us then maybe going back to one of the two who we of course signed on and putting them up for sale and then getting money that way this is simply what we've got to do we've got to try and, and, and wheel and deal and get money from players who are already here whilst also maintaining that we've got decent numbers in the team as well so it's a really tough balancing act at the moment we've only got the one centre back as a backup at the moment and we haven't got any full backs in behind either but Sukar can play as a left back so I am more inclined to keep him around than I am Lees who is a simple you know central defender straight up so we could get rid of him he's on 450 pounds a week and pick up a fairly decent upgrade with Jack Leckie who's on 550 pounds a week so I just feel like looking at the the need for a central defender how good his stats are we're going to accept that and we're going to bring him in but I think what we're going to do as well in turn we're probably then going to put Lees up for sale and get some money back that way and hopefully use it to get ourselves a left back or some depth in and around the back line because that's where we're really struggling for numbers at the moment but um, yeah potentially signings number two and signings number three we've got Harry Perrett and Jack Leckie there's confirmation as you can see there Harry Perrett three star he's a potential Vanarama national player of four star which is awesome 500 pounds a week pretty happy with that they see him as a key player for the club and they're even happier with the signing of Jack Leckie who's three and a half star four star potential and um, yeah he's a very very talented player another really good replacement for Jack uh, Jake Lawler who of course was once a good fullback for us so we're gonna bring Harry Perrett in and play him as a well we'll have him as a supportive wing back that's what we want from him and then we'll stick Leckie alongside Leek and suddenly for me that centre back pairing is looking a lot better than what it did before and just like that another player looks to be joining us Caden Kelly a very very good looking attacking playmaker he can actually play a bit further forward as more of a number 10 but um, yeah, we want him in as a central midfielder who can push that little bit further forward. So Caden Kelly joins us as a 20-year-old attacking midfielder. Three stars at the moment. He could potentially be League 2 standard. And the board are happy that we've signed someone who is as talented as he is. And we can't obviously rely on Harvey playing every single week. So we are going to bring Caden Kelly into a midfield two likely as i say we'll be putting him in a more attacking role little's going to be a little bit more on the defensive side of things but um yeah the hope is that you know if not he can be good competition for the pair of them and we can also have james harvey coming in that then begs the question what we do with will hatfield because he has got a year left on his contract he's 32 now so we might be best trying to get some money for him while we can and i feel like James Harvey could be the, the regen or the replacement for him in that position. So once again, we've brought one in. It's an upgrade on what we already had. But at the same time, another might have to go out the door. So we've finally been able to get rid of Tom Elliott. Um, it took lowering the price numerous times. We went through a we went through transfer room twice. Then we went through, finally, an intermediary. And the team who was interested finally come in and got him for what I think is a snip, which is five and a half thousand pounds. It gets an unhappy player off our books, but the board of only gave us 800 pound of five and a half K. The stingy people. So we're still, even though we've got him off the books, I mean, the 800 pounds not being added to the transfer budget as yet, but it's not going to make much difference as we are currently 100 pound over our wage budget still trying to work things out I think we can probably let Lee's go as well and hopefully we'll get some wage budget obviously the 600 pound Tom Elliott was getting paid will be knocked off as well so we're trying our best 
But yeah, struggling at the moment. We are trying to get this guy left back from Alfreton, but they want a fee for him. He'd be absolutely fantastic at left back if we could just just get him for free and pay his wage, but it looks like they're not going to let us do that. A bit like the guy we've got at right back. He's a left back with really good potential. A bit more on the defensive side when it comes to a wing back, but I'm not too bothered about that. As long as he can get forward and assist, he's got good defensive stats, which is awesome. And we're trying to negotiate a deal for Max Howells, who is a Swedish winger who was at Middlesbrough. He's left there. He rejected a contract to come to us to go to Lincoln, which is fine because it's Lincoln. But he's in there under 21s, so we've then went in to say, well, can we loan him? Which we can, but they want us to pay all of his wages, which I'm happy to do, but the board won't let us do it while we're over our budget. So I'm hoping once the Elliott deal goes through, we'll have the money available to then possibly bring Max Howells in, who bolsters our right-hand side, which is looking a little weak. And then we can let Lees go to free up some money there. It's all just crazy. We're spinning about a thousand plates at the moment trying to get these deals done. It's not easy and we are midway through July now and the season is quickly approaching. But we are getting a squad together. I don't think it's going to be the finished article by any point once the season starts. But we're doing the best we can. Okay, so the wage budget has gone up to £1,936 which we're going to you know completely get rid of and it gives us 8880 so we have now got room I'd like to think to sign Max Howells once that comes in so we will have a right winger on the right hand side Rivers will be a good backup which for me rounds off the top end of the pitch you know I feel like in midfield Kelly and Little are probably best competing together with that position with James Harvey alongside them or Will Hatfield who I I might keep around just for depth, to be honest with you. Um, so this area of the pitch is done. I'm really relieved we don't have to go shopping for strikers. I think Thompson, Nelson, Curry, absolutely great. A couple of youngsters in there as well who can help us on either side. We are absolutely fine up top. It's at the back, which is an issue. And another issue is Tommy Taylor wants to discuss a new contract. Because, as I say, he's on a month-to-month -month deal at the moment and none of the goalkeepers that I'm scouting are any good and the really good ones don't want to come. So, as much as I'm desperate to go out there looking for a brand new goalkeeper, Tommy Taylor, 31, we might get another year out of him. It might be something we have to do and someone we have to keep just for the time being. But, to be fair, I don't know if he was the problem last season. It might have been... I think it was more individual errors individual mistakes with a better centre-back pairing in front of him I think we can have faith in Tommy Taylor so I might offer him a new deal and then that rounds off the goalkeeping position and uh, we also then have you know young Liam Mason as a backup so yeah I might just do that and then we can draw a line under goalkeeper and the focus then is primarily on fullbacks. So annoyingly, we've held off and held off and held off and held off to get the wage budget available to sign Max Howells and just as we've got the money available, they've basically turned around and said that they don't want to even bother loaning him to us. And uh, they were willing to let us take all of his wage, £300 a week. They're not going to let us do that anymore, which is really, really infuriating. And I don't think we're going to be able to do anything else with Max Howell. So there is a really, really good 19-year-old winger sat right there who we have just missed out on because we couldn't get rid of Tom Elliott. And Lincoln have basically pulled the plug on it. So we might have to hang on and see if we can possibly go back in later on in the window. I don't know how long. We might have to wait how long before they'll enter negotiations with us again, but they've now switched his loan status to unavailable. So if this would have happened a week ago, I dare say we'd have had Max Howells in. Unfortunately not. So we are going to have to go out now and probably try to find a right winger as well. So we finally have another signing to confirm. We're pretty much on the eve of the season. It's been a really, really tough transfer window. Um, trying to get everything timed and waiting on some deals to go through, waiting on players to possibly leave. We are still struggling to shift quite a few of our players to the point to which we've, we've pretty much put them up for free and we're still getting nothing in for them. But we have made a new signing. CJ Clark is coming in as a ball-winning midfielder. 
He is three stars at the moment, has the potential of four stars, and um, yeah, given the stats he has, comparing him to all the other central defensive midfielders that we were looking at, he for me is probably the most exciting of the lot. As you can see, we've got so many players on trial, mostly across the back line is what we're looking at, but um, yeah, we're hoping that, that a couple of them, who are looking promising to be fair at the moment, will come good, and there's a few that we've put a few offers out there for to see if they want to join us and as you can see we have had a couple of possible deals in the pipeline we had a loan deal there for a ball winning midfielder from South Shields which we don't need now because we've got one permanently and then we did have a potential loan deal for a right back from York City but as it stands that was more so for depth and uh, yeah the board just not letting us loan anyone in right now because I guess they've got more of a say over the wages which we are allowed to basically put forth to buy them so where is CJ Clark where is he has he not joined the squad yet let's uh, jump forward another day where is he CJ Clark he's in the under 18s why have they dropped him in the under 18s that's really really silly uh, let's get him popped up to the senior squad. Why he's been dropped in there, I have no idea. But now we've got re really, really good depth in midfield. Obviously, Kelly and Little equally just as good. But if we do want to drop a ball winner alongside Kelly or alongside Little, CJ Clark's your man. But um, what I think I will do for the time being is we will obviously start Ben Little. He's going to be our starting midfielder we were going to build the team around him but CJ Clark to come off the bench I think has us perfectly stocked in midfield we've also got James Harvey in there as well so as it stands we are still looking at a winger on the right hand side we've got a young lad in at the minute who I think out of all the wingers has looked the best and that is Michael Spellman he's left footed so what we'll probably do is if he, if he joins us is we'll stick him over here Green will go on to the other side Rivers will provide good backup for the wing positions as well as the likes of Sinian who we've obviously gotten and Chris Prince as well and then it is again just focused on both wing back and uh, left back it, it's quite frustrating actually because we've we've sort of not panicked to get signings in early but we've got a lot of signings done and since then keep as an example we've had a couple of keepers in on trial and suddenly loads of really nice goalkeepers have popped up who I love the look of who I would have preferred over Tommy Taylor but um, now we've signed him onto a new deal and we are overspending on our transfer, our wage budget. It's another one of them things which we just have to sort of hang fire for. Because as I say, Will Hartfield, he's listed to go for free. No interest in him. Um, Toby Lees, he's listed for free. Surprise, well, 3K actually. I'm, I'm going to drop him for free as well. Surprised that these guys aren't getting any attention, um, especially Toby Lees. But um, obviously we can't release them, so we're going to have to just hope to God that they get some attention and that we get them out the door, because that will really make a difference. We've also got this guy, another player we had in on trial, Nathan Newell, who could be coming in as our first choice left back. Two and a half stars at the minute, so not as good, but has really good potential. And what I like the most is his versatility in possibly setting into a two-man central defence as well. So if we do have any issues in here, injury-wise, if Suka's not available, obviously we're wanting Lee's gone, he can slot in into that position as well. But yeah, we are on the eve of the season and we're waiting for some deals to get over the line. We're waiting for some potential outgoings as well. Um, this and this squad is not going to be finished for a long time. I don't think it'll even be finished weeks into the season you know we've, we've we've got lots of work to do in between games we just have to hope that we've got enough um you know to get through the early games i think we are a little lucky in the sense that our opening game is against a side who've just been promoted fc united of manchester have been promoted and braintree i don't recall them being in our league either have we got two newly promoted teams this is a good time to maybe look at our season preview and uh, we are in and around where we were last season in ninth place, which is interesting. Um, South Shields, our favourites to go up as champions. Scunthorpe, as you'd expect, are up there as well. And the relegated teams as well, Kidderminster, Harriers, Oxford City 
are also up there as favourites with Tanworth and Spennyman. But we're up there on the outskirts of the playoffs, which is good. And your FC United of Manchester, the team have just come up, are favourites to go right back down. So we've got an easy starter. Telford and Leamington are also newly promoted. So I don't know where the hell I've got it from that uh, Braintree were not in this league last season. And, uh, oh my god, Britta Sombalonga was once a player for them? I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, they were in our league last season. Oh no, they were in the National League s South? I'm wondering if they've had to, because of the teams who've been relegated, they've had to stick some of the more Northern National League South teams into the National League North. That might be what they've done to try and offset the balance. So I don't know how good Braintree are. They seem quite good. But um, yeah, we're almost on the eve of the season. And uh, we've still got players to potentially come through the door. We've still got players coming through on scout reports. And listen, we've still got a hell of a lot of work to do. Are we ready for the season? Kinda. Um, but I definitely would still like to bolster in many areas. And most importantly, get some of these other players out the bloody door. So some good news then. Just before the eve of the season, Nathan Newell has accepted the offer to join us. He is a 22-year-old fullback on the left. He came in on trial, looked by far one of the best of the bunch. And as we've done with a lot of players, we've looked at the potential and seeing that there is a very, very good player there. He has the potential to be a key player, B- minus from the board, which is awesome. And uh, that, thankfully, allows us to take Sukar out of that left-back position and bring in Newall, who has been dropped straight into the team. Thankfully, he's not been dropped into the under-18s. And, um, yeah, he is a another supportive wing-back, very much in the same um, sort of sense as Perrett on the right-hand side. But, you know what, we've let players go who... We're older, they've reached their potential. We've arguably replaced them with players who are at the same sort of level, but in terms of their ceiling, they can be you know, absolutely fantastic players in the future, and that's what we're trying to build here at Darlington. So um, yeah, another huge step towards getting the squad ready. We still have Michael Spellman as a potential winger to come in and start over Jarrett Rivers. We've been waiting for this deal to be accepted for quite a while now. And then we'll see, it might be more depth after that, there might be a couple of surprises who pop up in between now and then. But um, yeah, we're pretty much ready for the season now. So unless anything else happens, I think that's going to be the transfer. Oh no, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. We've got another player in. Michael Spellman has decided to join us on a free transfer. Again, he was another, um, another, another player on trial. He's really, really good in terms of his current ability. Three and a half star. Another one with decent potential. And I think he's going to be a real attacking menace on the I say he's he wants to play on the left although I think he's a left footer or he wants to play on the right but he's a left footer it's one of the other so he's a left footer whereas Harry Green's a, a right footer playing on the left for me I like my wingers to play you know on their natural side so we're going to bring him in and we're going to start Spellman on the left and that will allow Jarrett Rivers to be a backup winger which is awesome, and um, we are getting there. We're getting close now to having our squad ready for the opening day. So wingers, first team wingers are in, strikers, midfielders, fullbacks, defenders. I think our first 11's almost there. It's just a case of getting the depth, I think, in certain areas. And I think we can do that if we offload a few players. We're only £300 over our transfer budget, you know. So I think given the financial issues that we've had, the players we've been able to let go, the players we've brought in, I think we've been able to, to pretty much maintain, if not increase our quality, and we've got a permanent player in on, on the wing as opposed to a loan signing, which we had. I'm happy with the full-backs. I'm delighted with the centre-backs. I would have liked a better goalkeeper, but that could still happen. Um, that could still happen, and we could drop Tommy Tiller down to a number two, but we are ready for the start of the season. So, yeah, in the next episode, we will return with the opening two games of the season. It will be FC United of Manchester, followed by Braintree, and I'm sure plenty more transfer dealings in between. So, guys, if you've enjoyed this transfer special, do hit the like button and subscribe for much more, as Season 2 is about to start tomorrow with the first games of the season, where we're hoping to kick on from the relegation-threatened season we had last season to hopefully one where we can be fighting up towards the playoffs, which would be awesome. If you've got any more suggestions on players, wonder kids, or tips and tricks to get the best players in at this level, let me know in the comment section below. But until next time, guys, a big thank you for watching. Do take care. 
and hopefully I'll see you all tomorrow.